Hello students, welcome to Legacy IIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about a recent statue that has just been unveiled in the Supreme Court of India by the Chief Justice himself. The statue represents the Lady Justice. However, it is different from the traditional statues of Lady Justice that we had been seeing in the past in the Indian courts as well as the kind of statue that we see even in outside of India in several other countries. So what is the significance of unveiling of this particular statue and what is the changes that has been made and what is the significance of those changes that is what we will try to discuss in this video. So first of all to give you the background of this particular topic, the Supreme Court has unveiled a new statue of Lady Justice that is trying to reimagine the image that the original image that largely portrays driven from the or what you can say the driven from the ideas from the ancient Roman and Greek mythologies. Now the new statue stands at almost 6 foot tall in the judges library and is of sari clad woman with no blindfold that is the first change that has been made in the traditional statues the lady justice is always blindfolded so blindfold has been removed the attire has been changed to the traditional Indian attire of sari and one change that is uh, one uh, thing that is common to the earlier statue is also that this new statue also is holding the scales the weighing scale and the sword that was initially wielded by the traditional statues the sword has been replaced by a copy of Indian constitution so some things has remained same while something has changed the new statue with unimpaired vision is meant to signify that law is not blind if you try to understand the traditional statue where the lady justice is blindfolded it basically represents a symbol of law is blind basically conveying that it does not discriminate however the recent interpretation and the changes that has been made is where the blindfold has been removed and the chief justice of india in this regard has explained this because we are not talking about the blind, law is not blind we are not talking about that law sees everyone equally and that is why this decision has been taken if you look at the new take and for example you can look at the image here to compare the tra classical traditional Greek statue and the new statue that has been unveiled in the Supreme Court. So the difference is clearly visible. So if you talk about the statue itself the design of the statue has been done by Vinod Goswami who is a muralist and teaches at the College of Art in Delhi. The new take on the statue comes in the wake of several legal reforms that we are witnessing in the judiciary of India as well as in the legal provisions of India. For example, new criminal courts or Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita has been brought up instead of the older British uh, time criminal procedure court and penal court and the stated aim of decolonizing the legal framework in India. And this unveiling of a statue we can say understand is nothing but the continuation of the same trend. The blindfold in the classical tradition has been popularly understood to represent the impartiality of justice. So the impartiality of justice now has been transformed that now law sees everyone equally without any discrimination. So if you look at first of all the origin that where and how the lady justice began. So the origin of the statue can be traced back to the Greek and Roman mythology both. If we talk about the Greek mythology, there is a date, there is a what we can call as a titan called as Themis. Themis is one of the 12 titans that are born to the Gia and Uranus. Both are considered as a gods in the Greek mythology. And this is something that has been explained by a well known Greek poet by the name of Hesoit, who lived uh, circa 700 BC, somewhere in the 700 before common era. And the Themis here is known as the goddess of justice, wisdom and good counsel. The statue or the image of Themis are something that you can see in the upper part of the slide. So this is the representation of Themis. Again you can see she is holding sword in one hand and is also blindfolded. Now if you talk about the Themis, she is often depicted as a woman holding scales in one hand and a sword in the other hand. Now if you talk about the Roman uh, mythology, for the first time the Roman Emperor Augustus who ruled Rome somewhere between, between 27 BC to 14 CE introduced the worship of justice in the form of a goddess which is referred as Justitia or Lestitia. Justitia however is slightly different from Themis because Justitia did not wear a blindfold and the image of Justitia we can see here that has been erected in the city of Rome. Now as we can see 
like same like Themis Justicia also is wielding a sword and a weighing scale on the other hand however blindfold is not present here. So this is how we can trace the origin of both uh, what we can call as the uh, Lady Justice from both Greek and Roman mythology. However, if we talk about the history of uh, this statue, a noted legal scholar by the name of Desmond Manderson, who teaches in the College of Law in the Australian National University, he believes that the full blindfolding justice is a kind of woodwork that was published in a, law, in a poem uh, somewhere by early 17th century and it basically depicts the eponymous fool who is blindfolding a woman resembling Lady Justice and the image of the same we can see from this particular slide here. And what Desmond Manderson believes is that this lady also is wielding a sword in one hand and scales in other hand. However, this representation of this image was largely a satirical representation. However, by the early 17th century, Manderson wrote, the image has lots, lost its satirical connotation and had come to be equated with the very notion of justice. So, this image was first of all portrayed by an Austrian painter or what you can call as Austrian uh, this uh, artist and this later on became or began to be introduced as a lady justice in several other European nations including Great Britain. So, if you talk about the lady justice in India, this is something that is a tradition or that is what you can call as an, as an art form was brought by the British themselves and along with the common law legal system that continues to serve as the basis for how India judiciary function, the British Raj also introduced the iconography of the lady justice. Now, first of all, if you talk about the lady justice, it was something that was built in Calcutta High Court, constructed somewhere in the year 1872 where the images of the Lady Justice were carved into the pillars supporting the building of the court. Not only that, depictions show Lady Justice blindfolded in some cases with her eyes open in others. So, both representations are something that are introduced or that were introduced in India during the British time. Similarly, if you look at the other major court that is the Bombay High Court too, it features a statue of Lady Justice at the top of one of its building, once again without a blindfold. A mural close to the judge's entrance shows Mahatma Gandhi and Lady Justice on either side of a chakra as well. If you look at the Supreme Court of India, this is the mural that we are talking about. In the central part, you have the Asok Chakra and on the left, you have Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation and then on the right side, you have the Lady Justice mural. Now, the same mural or similar mural has been uh, transformed or basically we can say has been erected in the form of a statue with some subtle changes as we have discussed. Now, if you try to understand in more detail about the symbolism of this statue, so more importantly, our social diversity, the discrimination faced by underprivileged sections, constitutional provisions and laws made for their upliftment is believed to require a nuanced approach of viewing every case appropriately and delivering justice. And this is something that the new statue represents. Second, the sword has been replaced with constitution. Basically, it is also a symbol of the supremacy of the constitution as far as the Indian legal system, Indian justice system is concerned and what is the value of constitution in our jurisprudence, this is something that also is represented by the changes. And next we can talk about the preserving of the scales goes on to so that the courts will continue weighing evidences impartially and hearing both sides before delivering its final judgment. So, this is how the Chief Justice of India have interpreted and explained the symbolism that is present in the recent statue. So, if you talk about the protests in Bangladesh, there also we have a connection with us. Uh, in the beginning, we have discussed about the Greek uh, Titan Themis. So, in December 2016, in Bangladesh, a large statue of Goddess Themis was erected in the front plaza of the Supreme Court, Bangladesh Supreme Court. However, the statue also were wearing sari, as in the case in India. However, the statue was blindfolded and held scales and sword. But since the statue was in the form of idol, it witnessed a huge protest especially from the Muslim orthodoxy who objected to what they claim was idol worship. And as you know, few months back, when the Sheikh Hasina government was toppled in the Bangladesh and she has to flee to India, after, her, after the fall of her regime, the statue was demolished. So, this is something that we can connect with the Bangladesh as well. Now, since we have talked about the erection of new statue in the Supreme Court premises, we also have to look at the reforms that is required in the overall judiciary of India. 
So first of all, if you talk about the major problems that the Indian judiciary faces is the long pendency of the cases. And as per the report, today we have over more than 5 crore cases that, uh, cases that is pending in the all courts of the country. And as we know that justice delayed is justice denied, there is urgent, uh, urgent reform or urgent actions required in this area. Recently, a PIL was also filed where a petition was made that all these pending cases should be disposed within a time frame of three years. But that PIL was dismissed because that was considered to be impractical. Obviously, the pendency is a problem, but disposing of all cases in a time frame of three years was considered as impractical by the court. Second is something that uh, it is a memorandum of procedure uh, that deals with the appointment of judges by the Collegium. Over five, uh, over eight years have passed, but still no action has been taken on them. So that is something also we need to work on. Third is something that we can talk about the social representation. If we talk about the India's population, we have a huge, significant population of other backward caste, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, as well as religious minorities. But overall, collectively, they hold less than 25% of the post in higher judiciary. Even if you talk about the women, they just constitute less than 15% of the total uh, of, uh, total we can say seats in the higher judiciary. So this is not a representation of our social diversity. Here also we should aim to increase the representation from these sections. Next we can talk about the high courts. So high courts invariably operate at only 6 to 70 percent strength thereby contributing to the huge pendency of over 60 lakh cases in the high court. So obviously the state government should make uh, effort to ensure that the vacancies are filled at appropriate time and there is no vacancy or uh, the strength of the court is maintained at least more than 90%. So this will also help in solving the pendency of the cases. And ultimately what we can say is that the cases dealing with the constitutional validity of the amendments or the laws which have a huge significance and a wider ramification and individual liberty related cases, these are the cases that should be heard on a priority basis by the higher judiciary like high courts and supreme courts and these measures would ensure that the new symbol of the lady justice that we have constructed in the supreme court premises does not just remain symbolic, rather it reflects the action taken for the delivery of fair and prompt justice. So, the action that we have taken of erecting the statue should also be backed by the, by the required reforms in the judiciary. That is all for this particular video. Thank you very much.